Hey, everybody, this is a member's preview for today's member's episode. If you want to hear the whole thing and you're listening on YouTube, go ahead and hit the join button or the link in the description to become a member on YouTube. And if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, go ahead and become a member at theconfessionalspodcast.com slash join, and you can hear the whole episode today. Uh, today, we got Eugene on the show. Eugene, you, um, uh, you contacted me. Mm -hmm. about your dog man encounter mm -hmm. and it turns out you're a mason you're just telling me about the mason stuff and you're <laughs> telling me about your wife and i was just like let's just start recording okay um and so we'll, we're just going to jump around here but uh i want to i want to start with the the dog man stuff okay uh because you so all right you're you used to be a competitive fisherman right yes sir fast fisherman mm -hmm. uh and you think you know who Kyle is. I've heard his voice in different places. Um, I lived in Columbia, Kentucky. I lived in Russell Springs, and I was uh, I was an officer in a in a coon hunting club. Um, I th I don't know his face, but I've heard his voice, and I can't. I'm not going to speculate who he is. Yeah, you know that's. But I know uh, I know where he's at. There's some odd things that go on down there. Yeah. Um, I when I coon hunted down there, I rode ponies a lot through the night. Of course, you know, ponies are a, a herd animal. Um the ponies would get pretty scared about some things. You would ride ponies yes, while sir. you're coon hunting. Yes, sir. Uh the, the country's so rough that way, you know, it, up this way, down this way, you know, hollers and mountains. Well, they call them mountains, they're not mountains where I'm from, but um uh, it's pretty rough. And at the time, uh Lake Cumberland had been lowered for them to fix the dam down at Wolf Creek. They had some problems with the dam. It took, several, I guess, two or three years, maybe even longer, to uh, to fix that dam for to raise the water level. So, you know, it got steeper. The water goes down. You got banks and cliffs. And so um, I coon hunted with a lot of people. I I, um, I was in the UKC and PKC, Professional Coon Club, United Coon Club. Um, I had a night champion dog, uh, very good dog. Um, so I, I met a lot of people when I was the president of a coon club down that way uh, yeah. for a little while. Uh, good people, great people. Um, usually when they tell you something, it's a God's gospel. Hmm. You know, if they're looking you straight in the eye and tell you something, you better believe it. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Can we scoot this closer to you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks, sir. Um, but, um. Where was we going with that one? So no, you, uh, Kyle. Kyle. Uh, yeah. Right. So so you 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 recognize his voice. I do, and and there used to be a fella in Nancy, Kentucky, that everybody knew. Everybody knew. They would go to his place and kind of hang out in a barn. You know, I'm not going to say his name either because sure. But everybody knows who he is. Uh, good old guy, dog trader, coon hunter. Uh, give you the shirt off your back. Uh, but I, I believe I know who he is. That's interesting. Yeah, and if I'm, I, and I believe it's the fellow that I know. Uh, you can count; he's pretty credible. Yeah, uh, he's he's not going to tell you something. He comes if I'm if I'm if I'm right. Uh, his family's good people too. They they have no reason to lie about anything. You know, uh, I would love to get you, him, and another guy back down here in this room to talk. Okay. One day, if it's possible, I don't know if it's possible on everybody's ends. I don't know if he's willing to do it. Uh, I think he, I think he's kind of loosened up on his uh, concealing his identity, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. So I don't want to speak out of term, mm -hmm. but uh, it's interesting because I, I came across a dog man documentary on YouTube mm -hmm. and uh I wasn't looking for it, but I it must have been the title or maybe, I don't know, the the, um, the thumbnail or something that got me. Mm -hmm. And I cl hit on it. And the very first, I didn't know what the documentary is about as far as like how they had it formatted. <laughs> and it seems like they um, they were interviewing people who had encounters with Dogman mm -hmm. in Kentucky. And the first guy was a younger guy, probably in his early to mid thirties. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he said he was from Kentucky and I think he was with his dad and he was talking about their experience. And so right away, I just took the link and I sent it to Kyle and I said, Hey man, this guy's from Kentucky too and stuff. And he texted me back. He's like, I know him. <laughs> he's like, 
<laughs> he goes, we fish together all the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. I never knew he had a dogman encounter. Wow. He's wow. like, he's like, and, and that's, that's what he told me when I first started talking to him and we went to do the documentary and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, people around here just don't talk about it. Like they, we don't talk about this stuff. Right. Uh, people and, look at us like we're stupid. We're, we're, we're country mountain folk that are un, uneducated. Yeah. And we don't know what we're talking about. And things like that. But it's crazy because like, uh, if you guys are all having these experiences and you're all keeping it to yourselves, is it like, it's like one of those things, is it because you're afraid that the neighbor's going to think you're crazy or are you afraid that like, if it gets out into the broader public that they're going to think. That's it. That's it. The broader public, uh, people are going to look at us like, you're crazy. Because you're already right. mad folk. We're, we're, all, we're already kind of like, what do you call it? Uh, labeled. You know, like rednecks. Yeah, redneck, yeah. hillbilly, toothless, chew tobacco, yeah, play yeah. the banjo, drink moonshine, grow pot, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know? and uh, everybody that um, that you said that know each other and seen that they didn't know. Yeah, I'll tell you this: that people that hunt, people that fish, any people that spend a lot of time in the outdoors, whether it be their occupation or their playtime or just sideways, just make an extra money or whatever. They, they encounter a lot of strange things. Um, in Adair County there, uh, where I used to live down close to that, there's a place, um, I can't remember the Ridge, but it's down South of past Columbia. It, there was a place called Tater Cave. And Tater Cave used to be years ago where these people that I guess lived on this Ridge would take their potatoes for the winter time and put it in this cave and they would keep. Well, this whole this whole ridge line down through there, it was really, really creepy. And when I'd go in there, it would be really, I believe it was called Flatwoods, matter of fact. Um, but people always drove around because nobody really, they, they respected it, but everybody and everybody was going through there to ride four wheelers, ride horses, hunt, you know, dig mushrooms, dig ginseng if ever was there or whatever. Yeah. And, um, a lot of people seen some strange things in there. I I seen something that I didn't never think that I would ever see in my life. Um, I seen a ball of light about as big as a basketball go through the. I mean, it was. I was. I had my light off coon hunting and heard a big woo kind of thing, and it's just I looked where it was at, and there's a big ball lit up. And it looked like this lit up this room. A like woo, like like a whoop, like, like a big like whoop? a woo, yeah. Really? I mean, and then this ball of light. And then I heard something that sounded like a, I guess, and this is going to sound strange, kind of like a, you know, a stock trailer that people load their cattle up on, a little stock trailer, like a, dang, like a gated close. It's real, just smashed together. And uh, of course, I, I was with somebody else, and I can't remember who I was with. He was an older fellow. We, there was a few of us that, hey, you hunting tonight? Yeah, well, I'll go with you. Yeah. And he didn't believe in that kind of stuff. And I didn't know about, I mean, I knew what I seen years ago. This is at, when I'm coon hunting. This is when I'm telling you about this story. What I seen happen before that incident. And uh, it, it just, everything got quiet. The crickets didn't even chirp. There wasn't no sounds. And and come to think of it, I didn't, there's, it's all hardwood. So there's acorns in there. There's walnuts in there. There's. We didn't even hear no acorns or walnuts dropping. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you could have heard a pin drop in there. Dogs wasn't barking. I had a silent mouth dog anyway. He didn't ever open up on track. When he opened his mouth, that's what- What, what does that mean? Um, you, have a, you have a dog that, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a tree and walker man. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter to breed. A silent mouth dog is when he strikes a, strikes a trail, it's a sin of a, of a coon. They open up, they start barking, okay, and they'll bark till you know wherever till they get to the tree, okay. Why do they the, call it silent mouth then? Why do they say well, loud mouth? Now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain. Okay, that. okay. So that dog he'll let out a big low cake, okay. When they believe the coon is in the tree, he'll smell around the tree, okay, and he'll if the one way goes up, there's not none come down. He'll let out a big low cake holler. It's like he'll either go, Ooh, you know, like a big long ball, and then he'll go to chopping. That's a chop mouth dog, mm. like raindrop pop, 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 pop. Or you might have a ball mouth dog, oh, oh. But you, it gotcha. all depends on what your dog, what you know. Gotcha. Okay. So my dog was a silent mouth dog. Never, when he hit a track, you never heard it. 
the only time you hurt him is when he treated. So, and people hated me. Some people hated me. Me and my ex-wife at the time had this dog together. And it took us forever to buy this dog from these people. Uh, the, the kid had, that started him was phenomenal. Uh, good guy. Uh, this dog come out of a, a well, really bred dog, my dog. Well, anyway, um, the dogs wasn't even barking, Tony. I mean, nothing moved. And my dog was known through this country that uh, if he opened his, if you hunted with me on a, on a, on a hunt, there's three, there's about three or four guys that go to the world hunt every year because they're good dog handlers. Somebody else may own the dog, but they are the handlers. My dog, my mine, my ex-wife's dog could have went to the world hunt, and people come up. You know, we, there's like a four or five dog cast. You know that you hunt on a on a PKC or UKC hunt. Uh -huh. People say, "Oh, overdrive's in there. We're not hunting. Really? We're going to the truck. You know, we're not. We're mm -mm. so. I, I shouldn't probably said that name. If my ex-wife ever see this, she'd probably get <laughs> mad as a hornet. But anyway, um, nothing moved. Nothing for. 20 minutes. I mean, the only thing you heard was your breath in your heart. And it was, you know, there wasn't, it had been breezy that night. Even the wind had stopped. It was on a dark night. Nothing moved. And I looked at the fellow that we was hunting, that was hunting with me. I said, man, let's get our dogs and go. Mm. He said, oh, you just, just wait a few minutes and dogs will hit track. My dog, when he, when he, when he, when you turn him loose, you didn't get him until you either hollered dead and he could hear you and he'd come to you or he treat. He was a machine. He didn't come back. Wow. He, he came back. My dog never done that. So that was, that made me think back that, you know, Hey, wait a minute, some screw is going on, but it was one o'clock at night. Nobody should be slamming a damn stock trailer gate. Yeah. Not especially where we're at. You so, know, it sounded like a stock, like an iron or maybe aluminum gate that slammed it made a funny noise it didn't it didn't make sense and when and when you heard that was that before or after the ball of light that you saw that was before before yeah i believe so you, you heard the slam then you saw the light yep. same night yep yep wow. well the whoop come first the, the whoop, whoop yeah came. the the, the whoo kind of thing and, and then, then the, the slam. slamming gate and then we turn and there's that ball of light <laughs> it was. and i watched it and it it was about the size of a basketball it was weird wow. it, it didn't you know, kind of, it just was a straight line, and it went, you know, kind of through the trees. It kind of, like, went away from us. Yeah. You know, like in a 45-degree angle, and kind of crossed our path a little bit. And that's the way the dogs had went, you know. And uh, it never, it just got so far, and it just went dark. It was weird. I, I didn't, That is weird. So, are you familiar with the whole metal sounds that people are hearing in the woods? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. See, this is... Jack, this is why this like, uh, so I, I thought that you brought up the metal, the slamming door sound because you were familiar with other people's claims. So like, it's crazy. I've that, only watched maybe one or two of your dog man things. Really? Yeah. You're not a super fan. How dare well, you? Well, no, I'm now, now, now I, I, so, I like the little thing. No, it's, you know, but anyway, it's fine. I'm just kidding. Um, so there's a lot of people who are saying they're hearing metal sounds out in the woods around the time that they have these weird interactions and these weird events happen. Really? Yeah. Uh, and there, there, there's been plenty, especially since uh, I'd say the last year and a half, two years, mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more common that people are coming forward and talking about this, especially to me. This was 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean. oh, yeah. But that's the thing. People are recalling that these events happening, you know, decades ago, mm -hmm. and it's now people are starting to talk. Wow. Uh, Martin Groves uh, was sitting where you're sitting, and he's a retired sheriff from Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He had in 1993 uh, probably the most dramatic dogman encounter I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. um, eh, Kyle's is pretty close to that, actually. I'm on yeah. knock your boots off too. Yeah, uh, those two are right up there, mm -hmm. and Martin talked about how when he was hiking back to their camp, they were doing a, I think they were doing a coon hunt. Mm -hmm. I think it was a weekend of coon hunting, I believe. Um, no, it wasn't coon hunting because I don't think they had dogs with them. Do you coon hunt without dogs? You can, but you're, you're an idiot if you do. Okay, so. I mean, <laughs> unless yeah. you got a good nose or something. Yeah, no, I, mean. I, I don't think that, I think <laughs> it must have been something else. Anyways, they were they had, we, him and his mm -hmm. partner, they were both sheriffs. Uh, and 
on his way back to their camp, they had went their own ways. Mm -hmm. And on their way back to the camp uh, is when his interactions started happening before even the sun went down. Mm -hmm. And he remembers hearing this, this like metallic slamming sound. Really? And that's when uh, he saw uh, what he thought was somebody's hunting dogs pacing him up on a hill. And uh, it wasn't somebody's hunting dog. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but there's other people who 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 say they have these slamming sounds, and it's not, not always dog man. It's sometimes mm -hmm. it's other things. Mm -hmm. In fact, Bigfoot with Martin's story was on the scene. Right. Well, what I was telling you is my my son said. Well, my wife said to my son, her, they, and him and her both had heard this kind of woof. You know, I know bears kind of have a grunting, huffing kind of sound. And, I, you know, my wife is a city girl. She don't know a whole lot about the country. And I had to pick it up on YouTube or something to show her what, you know, what bear sounds. Like. She said, no, that wasn't it. It was kind of grunting like huffing. Mm. And I said, she, and she, it was right at dusky dark. Um, they had always heard, and I'll tell you something else that what happened there. Um, some strange noises. In, and she said, it sounded like a bulldozer was going through there without the engine sometimes snapping limbs and busting rocks and things really? like that. But anyway, um, she said that they looked over this bluff. You know, it must have been a 40, maybe 30, 40 foot bluff. And this thing was crawling up, crawling up the bluff. You know, what was it? I, she doesn't know. I said, was it a bear, Mary? She said, no. I said, was it a man? She said, yeah, it kind of moved like a man, but it was huge. Wow. She all got, four? Was it, all, all? it was crawling up all fours. Really? Yeah, crawling up wow. his bluff. And wow. she said it, its head had to be as big as a bushel basket. Like you took, took something, a bushel basket on top of its shoulders. Like it was rounded with no neck. And she also told me, which she don't, she, look, it's putting cold chills all over me. She told me that she don't like talk about that they, their, their little road that they lived on was right across from this farm that was all wooded. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was a little country one lane road. Okay. And this is where they lived in this little, they started this subdivision or whatever. And they had seen red eyes looking at them from the tree line. And we had, they had, a, when I've got, whether she was still there, they had a neighbor that was kind of a clown, you know, kind of thing. And our step, my stepson's kind of scared of a few things, but anyway, I, I don't blame him because for what he's seen. Yeah. Um, they had something that happened where there was a bunch of racket over there and Scott thought maybe it was Russell, the neighbor clowning around. Well, Scott picked up a, I guess, part of a red brick and threw it. Into the woods. At the at the eyes. Well, yeah. Well, no, that was a different time. But oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, they seen the eyes before that. Okay. But they thought, because there was always a bunch of clowning around over there, you know. And anyway, uh, he picked up a brick and cussed Russell's name and threw it into the wood tree line because it was just probably as thick as wide as this room, the road. And man, he said they was a stump, maybe two foot long and probably 24 inches around. That a man could not throw Jeez. with with his own hand that far, and they had kind of like a, I think a canopy that like a like a sun canopy, it had come across the road and hit that canopy. There's no way me or you together couldn't throw that thing that far. Yeah, and they had a lot of strange things going on then. This was a preview of today's member episode. If you like what you heard and you want to hear more of it, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com. Become a member if you're listening on the podcast feed. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and click the join button or the link in the description and you can become a member today on YouTube and get this show.